Hi everybody, my name is Richard Obodik and in this tutorial I'll be giving a brief overview over multi-parametric programming in general and introduce a little bit what multi-parametric means and what it's how it differs from general optimization. So in optimization in general, we generally want to solve this type of problem. So we have an objective function f of x, um, which takes some sort of um, optimizer x and gives out an objective function value and we want to find the minimum value but this minimum value should satisfy these optimizers should satisfy certain constraints that I've just uh, summarized here in g of x lesser or equal than zero. Um, note that throughout I'm uh, avoiding equality constraints uh, just for the sake of simplicity but all the things that I'm saying also extend to, in a, uh, to equality constraints as well. Now this is your general optimization problem in a very generic form and the solution to such a problem is the optimal values of the optimizers, so x star, your optimal values of the Lagrangian multipliers. Now, if you don't know what Lagrangian multipliers are, then um, I'd refer to you to any good optimization textbook. I've uh, linked one in the bottom from Professor Fludas. And um, also you get um, the, the z star, which is the optimal value of the objective function. And uh, so those three things constitute, actually even just the uh, first two, constitute the solution to a um, general optimization problem. Now, these are numbers, right? So this is, this is just uh, x, of x star is going to be 3, um, has maybe 5 entries, and it's 3, 5, 2, whatever. I, but it's, they are numbers. That's very important. Because in multi-parametric programming, consider this, you have on the left hand side you have a very easy simple linear programming problem okay so you have a polytope which are your constraints and uh, over that polytope you have the objective function which is the um, which are the dashed lines which are the hyperplanes of the uh, um, uh, of the objective function and um, you can see the dot right here uh, that's the that's the op optimal objective function value uh, sorry the optimal solution uh, with for x1 and x2 Right, so that's one point, and we can calculate this. Right. If we look on the other figure, right, what we're interested in now is let's say, hey, what happens if we're looking for the parametric solution along x two? So how basically does this solution change as a function of t? All right. And if we do that, then suddenly, what we get is we get planes here which are nothing else than the optimal objective uh, optimal optimizers over this um, over this polytope and right and so this is the key sentence here multi parameter programming sol solves an optimization problem over a range of parameters so in this case we wanted to know the optimi the optimal values over t in this case okay so this is really this is really at the heart the centerpiece of multi-parametric programming. So if we look at multi-parametric optimization in general, then what we're actually after in multi-parametric optimization is we minimize a function still, but instead of having objective function f of x, we have f of x and theta, and we have subject to g of x and theta. But we only minimize over x. What that means is that your solution is gonna are going to be functions of x. So basically, if you look at this from a different perspective, you can look at uh, the minimization operator um, as an as a as a projection operator, right? That projects from the x space onto um, the lower dimension of space. Now, in the normal optimization problem, you project down to the um, to numbers, right? So single um, to a, a zero dimensional, if you would. Whereas um, whereas in multi-parameter programming you project from the x plus theta space to the theta space. And so this is this is where all the complexity of multi-parametric programming comes in because all the things that we normally do in optimization for points now suddenly have to hold over dimensions higher than zero. And so the solution to this problem is x of theta, x star of theta, which is the optimal values of two optimizers, but they're functions of theta. Um, lambda star of theta, the optimal values of the Lagrangian multipliers, and x star of theta, the optimal value of the objective function. And those, as I said, are functions. 
those are not numbers those are functions and uh, getting those functions is um, is is crucial is the crucial part of multiparameter programming now as I said the solution are those three functions but it, it makes intuitive sense that the same function is not going to be the valid or is not going to be optimal everywhere okay so what that means is that very intuitively and uh, for all of this there's proofs and there's theories and there's lemmas and also so forth we will briefly later on touch upon this but if you're interested in this i'm uh, referencing in the uh, in the in the description several papers this video is supposed to give you an overview and a feeling for the problem not supposed to be a rigorous mathematical treaty so having said this you can understand that this uh, an optimal solution that is value valid for uh, or optimal for some parameters is doesn't have to be necessarily va valid for other parameters and so it makes intuitive sense that yeah probably there's going to be a region around where they're valid but not everywhere so and this is in fact true and uh, what that means is we partitioning the parameter space theta this uh, capital theta here into so-called critical regions and each critical region then has its own function which means you have one of these triplets x star lambda star z star for each critical region that you get so that means that the solution to a multi-parameter programming problem is that consists actually of a set of critical regions cri and then there's a number of those n and for each region if a parameter is in that region so if we look at a certain parameter then these are optimal okay and this is xi star of theta so this and these can vary from one critical region to the next and they almost always do um, so what you need to do basically to find the optimal solution of a multi-parameter programming problem you need to identify the critical regions and the associated functions xi star lambda i star and zi star of theta okay now this brings me to exactly the next point how do you get the parametric solution and before we go into the two methods that we can that we have to do this i briefly just want to touch upon something that's called an active set now for those of you who are not aware an active set this is a set of constraints which are active which means that equality holds at a given solution so if uh, if you remember we had g of x less or equal than zero now if we have an x zero um, that we're evaluating constraint is called active if g of x of zero is equal to zero okay and um, from another perspective from the dual solution perspective this also means that the um, uh, Lagrangian multipliers of that specific constraints have to be larger than zero um, this excludes now cases of degeneracies uh, which I will not touch upon in this video uh, we have another video dedicated to that now the parametric solution yields the optimal solution of an object optimization problem while satisfying the active set constraint now if you want to think about this graphically imagine this if we there were no constraints then we could just take the mm, from the Newton method the the um, for a convex problem at least we can just take the um, the derivative equal to zero and that's our optimal objective function values right because we don't we don't need to um, satisfy any constraints however if we have constraints it makes sense that if a solution is optimal over some parts then then uh, it doesn't it m doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be valid over all parts and it might valid violate those constraints so uh, the parametric solution any parametric solution that we're getting is always valid for a certain active set so for certain constraints that we consider to be active and all the others we basically ignore um, and those and those in fact bound your critical region um, on where this optimal solution this solution the parametric solution is optimal and feasible and um, in fact in for all continuous multiparameter programming problems each critical region is uniquely associated with an active set now what that means is that we um, every critical region has an active set okay it can be associated with an active set 
but some algorithms, especially the earlier ones, for instance, the one uh, from the um, 2002 paper on from uh, Ben Porat et al. that I've also linked below, create so-called artificial cuts, which are due to the algorithm. So not every active set uniquely corresponds to a critical region. Okay, um, but that's that subject of a different video. Just for now, think about this: every critical region is uniquely associated with an active set. And now let's briefly touch upon the two methods that we have to get the parametric solution. Now the first one is the so-called basic sensitivity theorem. And that was done in 1976 by Fiacco. Also in the description you have the link to that. And the basic idea is this, right? Let's assume we sol solve an optimization problem and we get a point. Okay? So we get x0, lambda0, and theta0. And that's this, this dot that you see right there in the constraint region, which is the, this triangle kind of thing, right? And the idea is basically, can we explore the solu solution around that point based on the problem structure? Okay, can we use the, uh, the information of the problem together with the solution point itself to infer how the solution around it is going to be? Okay, and so by the way, so the, uh, the theta zero that you see right here, that's for a specific parameter realization. And if we fix this in the original problem and we solve the deterministic optimization problem, that's what we get. And in fact, it turns out, yeah, he was right. Um, you can get the parametric solution, x theta lambda theta, as a function of, these are numbers again, x0 lambda 0 are numbers, okay? This term, which we're going to look at in a second, and then theta minus theta 0. And so this doesn't depend on theta, this doesn't depend on theta, those who don't depend on theta. So this means what this is, nothing else, is a first-order Taylor expansion. And what he has proven in his pa paper, which is amazing, is that for any continuous multiparametric programming problem, uh, which satisfies conditions that we're going to come on later on, the error is bounded. Okay, The error between this value, this um, inference of the of the optimal solution around the solution point is bounded um, uh, is bounded with an error okay which scales with the distance between the point we're looking at and the theta zero and in fact and this is the corollary is for MPLP and MPQP problems the solution is exact and what that means is that lambda and x are affine functions of theta Okay, so for LP and QP problems, if you have a point in your problem, then you can get this the, the way the, the solution behaves around that point, and that um, behavior is going to be lin an affine function of the parameter. Okay, that's very important. Now let's briefly look at those mm, things M0 and N0. Those are matrices. This um, uh, L kind of thing here, is by the way the Lagrangian um, function. Uh, we're going to have a look at this in the next slide, and um, so these these can be calculated. This is just um, this is just some matri some matrices, and those are again those are basically the result of a first order Taylor expansion. For the second method that we can do, this is actually a method that's slightly um, different in its approach, but it's um, but it ultimately does the same thing. So those two those two as you will see now are very intimately connected. Now, what then? What the solution? What the idea is based on is basically to solve the KKT conditions parametrically. Now, what are KKT conditions? They're the so-called Karushkun-Taka conditions, and they look like this, right? And so basically, they tell you whether or not you have solved the convex optimization problem to global optimality, um, or not. And they they enable you to find um, uh, optimal points um, of constraint optimization problem. And um, so what you have here, this is the Lagrangian function I talked about before, and we have the derivative uh, with respect to the um, uh, objective function, and then we have the sum over the, this is the Lagrangian multiplier times the objective function, uh, the, the, the constraint values. We have to satisfy the constraints, we have to satisfy dual feasibility, and strict complementary slackness. And so if there is an x0 that satisfies all of this, then this x0 is a solution to your optimization problem. Okay? This is a very fundamental optimization theory, um, uh, so I'm not going to go much into detail in this. Um, but what 
is interesting now now let's assume we have a candidate active set okay so we know certain constraints are going to be active or we assume certain constraints are going to be active and which are in this index set k and now let's assume we look at our parametric problem okay so what we're getting now is we're getting the we're getting the uh, objective function right as a function of x and we get um, the constraints uh, sorry uh, we get the objective function as a function of x and theta and so on um, uh, this is exactly the same equation just that we have added this theta and that we only consider this over k right so um, this is uh, this is this but what that means is that this results in n plus um, cardinality of k equations so this first one these are n equations n being the number of optimization variables x okay and cardinality of k, k um, are uh, those equations which are basically fulfilling the active set uh, condition meaning that the uh, constraints have to hold with equality now what that means is that we have here we have three elements right we have your x okay which has n dimensions we have our lambda and our lambda has uh, cardinality of k dimensions why because the ones that are not the active set are zero automatically so we only have cardinality of k uh, Lagrangian multipliers that we don't know the value of and then we have theta and so what m what that means is when we have an MPLP and MPQP problem then this thing actually becomes a set of linear equations and the set of linear equations that results in the parametric solution of x and lambda of theta if you don't believe me that this is true just do it yourself on a on a small piece of paper and you can directly write this down that if you get a certain candidate active set you can solve this as a function of theta and you can put this in MATLAB and uh, there's going to be no problem at all. Now I briefly mentioned before there are some conditions and there's main there's three conditions for these two, two things to hold. Basically it's the conditions for the KKT conditions to hold because otherwise um, the second um, approach doesn't work at all. And those can be briefly summarized as follows. Um, second order sufficient conditions have to hold. What that basically means is that the problem has to be um, let's say uh, yeah they has to be well behaved from a sec from the second order derivative point of view the constraints have to be linearly independent the active constraints have to be linearly independent and strict complementary slackness has to hold which means uh, gi of x times la la lambda i has to be equal to zero okay so if those three conditions are fulfilled and those are normally only these th those are only fulfilled for convex continuous problems um, then uh, these two methods apply this has been the uh, tutorial now about uh, multi-parametric programming in general um, at the beginning we were a bit fuzzy but I hope and later on we, we, we were able to explain some more um, details uh, of the nitty-gritty stuff if you have any questions or comments just um, tell us in the link below